at this stage, photo carry report approved, you can't do manifest matching because customs would have to confirm that with the gating. And for TBT, they do their carrying manually. So it means that once you see gate out or your BL and your destination is TBT, you need to contact TBT for TBT to submit the carrying. For the other free stations, it's automated. So you see auto, meaning it has been done. But for TBT, the status will truncate at this point, meaning you have to contact them. Once they submit their carrying and it's approved, then customs prevent it. They will do the gating. Sometimes you see the, the status as gating confirmed end. What the end simply means is that if you have more than one container on your you have one more than more than one container on your BL, and only one of them has been gated in or two has been gated in. You see getting confirmed. You won't see getting confirmed end. The getting confirmed end is to show you that all the containers have been gated in. Now let's assume you are already working on your declaration. You are doing the match, and you want to come and track the BL. You don't have to leave the page. You can use this button here. You see this symbol here with three rings shaped in the greater sign over here. Once you click on it, it will ask you what you are trying to access. So if it's cargo tracking, you can do that here to open another window for you so that you still have your screen over there. You don't have to leave this screen and go. So we'll take a look at one BL. So here you can search with your container number or your BL number. Or if you have a DU, you can use that to search. But usually it's the BL number that you use. So when you search for the BL, this is where you see the status. This is where you see the status. Now you check the place of delivery, final destination. That is what will tell you whether you need a carry in or a get in. So here we have Jubilee as the first station, which means that we are expecting to see getting confirmed here before we can do manifest matching. If here was reading MPS, or GPHA, that's when we see carry in terminal here before. So if you go through the tracking of this particular BL, the BL was submitted, it was approved, tally submitted, tally approved. Then you have get out confirmed from MPS because it's going to Jubilee. So auto carry report approved, then you have getting confirmed. So once this is through, you'll be able to do manifest matches. So it means that if you are clearing at MPS, we won't have these two processes. You won't have get out and auto carry in. It will truncate at this point with a carry in terminal. Now let's take a look at the UCL. So for UCL, you need to submit the request in the system to customs. And the approval will be done at HQ. First, it was done at State Warehouse, but now they've moved it to HQ. So you need to go in the system and submit the request. So if you get that error, you register with UCL or your cargo has been designated in UCL, you will use this menu to submit it. So when you get on the screen, you have a new button here. Then once you click on the new, you have an add button. So here, assuming you have five BLs in your system that are on UCL, you don't have to do it one by one. You can submit as many BLs on the application for approval. This app is clear. So you don't do it one by one. If you have five BLs, you click on the add, search for the BL, search for the second BL, search for the third BL, and load all of them here before you submit. So once you click on the add, you key in the BL number search. Then you need to select it from the list and save so that it registers that BL. If you search this and you just click on it without saving, when you return to this screen, this screen will be empty. So you need to make sure that you select this checkbox and save for it to move there. So once that is done, you key in your reason, attach a copy of the BL, you save and you submit the application. And once it's submitted, you see the status as you see. So if there's any payment that you're supposed to make on this, once you return to this screen and you search, either with a BL number, and you click on search, you see the status there. You open the application, you see the bill there if it has been assigned. So let's take a look at this error. Cargo is not carried in. And this error comes about as a result of different issues. The first one is that obviously it has not been gated in. So the cargo is not carried in. So once you track the BL, you realize it's not gated in. You contact preventive for the 
get in. The second issue is you have a house bill, but it has not been approved. So unlike the master bills, which are submitted by the shipping line, when there's a breakdown, the breakdown goes through approval at manifest seat. So if manifest seat has not completed the approval of the breakdown, when you track your bill, you see this yellow bar. And it will be stating that house bill is not approved. Even though the status is reading getting confirmed, the approval needs to go through before you will be able to proceed. Then in the process of matching, you get a query that the container number or container size of the manifest does not match with what is on the BOE. Now that error comes about when probably you've manually typed the container number on the BO list before you submitted it. You clicked on add, you entered the container number. Now if you make a mistake with the container number, obviously it wouldn't match what has been submitted in the system. So if it was an O and you made it a zero, you get this query when you are doing the manifest matching. So in order to avoid this problem of container number or container size, and the other issue is you indicated the size as 20 dv. In the old system, it usually used to be 20 dv or 20 um, gp and hc. Now, the system uses codes to identify the container. And the ISO code that is accepted for the processing through the ports it uses G1, 45G1, 22G1. Those are the codes. So in order not to worry your head about the codes, don't indicate the container number or the container size. Don't manually type it. In the system, there's provision for you to just indicate the number of containers on the BO. That's all. So once you just indicate the number of containers, when you are doing manifest matching, the system automatically checks what has been gated in and populates everything for you. This, I hope, is clear. So don't, don't be scared. You might be thinking, hey, if I don't enter my container number, will they really go through? Maybe I should follow my boss's bet. If you do it, no, let me leave it there. <laughs> so here's an example of using a wrong container number. If you use a wrong container number, after you match, you get the query that the container number or container size does not match. So let's assume you do it and you get this error. What you do is that anything you have a suspend clearance on, you respond with a post entry. So it means you create a post entry at this point, then reselect the BL information as though you are doing manifest match. And the system itself will select the correct information. You save and you submit. So in that post entry, you are not correcting anything. You are not going to type any container number. You are just reselecting the BL information that's already in the system. You save and you proceed. So let me show where you indicate the container number. The number of containers, sorry. Okay, so it's on this screen. So under the BL tab, just before where you added the container numbers, you see the status, number of container status. Then you have up to 20 foot here, then you have 30 foot or more. So it means if you have two 20 footers, you just indicate at the 20 footer column, two. You don't indicate the container size over there. And also to affect your, the, the component of duty. So here is just referring to the number. So if you have two 20 footers, three 40 footers, you put two here, then you put three here then you proceed. Now for rural vehicles, you indicate that as the cars and non-containerized vehicles. You indicate that there. Now if it's bulk or loose, there's a drop down here where you see etc. You see loose and bulk there, you can select it and you proceed. Now there's this other error, chassis does not exist on manifest. And this error comes about because in the system, there's a portion where we read the chassis form. And that place is not the description. So you track your BO, all right, you see that the chassis has been listed in the description, but you are getting the error, chassis does not match with manifest. That's because in the system, there's a place we call the vehicle list where all chassis is loaded, including trailers, tractors. There's a particular portion where that is done, and that's called the vehicle list. So when you track, a bill and you go down to your container list there should be another tab called vehicle list so when you track a bill let me so this is an example when you track a bill 
and you go down here, you have tracking list, container list. You are supposed to see vehicle list. So far as there's a chassis or a vehicle on that BL, you need to see this. If you don't see this and you go ahead with matching, you get that error. So if you have five vehicles on this, you should see all the five chassis listed over here before you proceed. So if you don't see this, you can contact us. We do the upload for you. The shipping lines can also do it, or the consolidator who submitted it can do it in the system. So we'll take a look at short landing. And short landing occurs when you've paid for a number of containers or cargo, and not everything arrived. So the emphasis here is that you've paid. Now, if you've not paid, it's not recognized as short landing. Please, I hope that's clear. You submitted the entry with five containers, and you've paid on the five containers. But when the vessel arrived, you only brought three. In this instance, it's short landed. Now, if at the point where the vessel has arrived, you've not yet paid DT on it, usually at that point, you would have received a revised bill, and revised invoice for the two that would be coming. So it's just advisable that you modify your current DOE to suit what has arrived, then you treat the next entry as a fresh entry. Please, I hope it's clear. That's at your discretion. So I'm saying at the point where you're about to pay duty, you realize that some of the containers are not arriving. You have the option of going ahead to pay for all the five. Then if you pay for all the five, then you can treat it as short landed. But if you do the revision on it, then for the next consignment that will be coming, you just pass a fresh entry on that. So we'll take a look at when you've paid for the five containers and only three arrive. So what will happen is that in your attempt to do manifest matching, it wouldn't go through. Please, who can tell me why? You've paid for five containers, only three arrived, and now you are doing manifest matching. It won't go through. Who can guess the reason? Yes, the number of containers. It means that on your container list, three are reading getting and two are reading discharge declaration approved because the terminal never submitted the tally on the other two. So it means that you will not be able to proceed with manifest matching. Now, if the shipping line manifested all the five, then they have to go back and do an amendment to delete the two so that you can proceed with the matching. Please help us clear. If the shipping line manifested all the five, they need to remove those two containers through amendment so that your status is now getting confirmed end and you can proceed with matching. So if they delete the two and we are proceeding with matching, it will still not go through. Who can tell me why? You've gone ahead to delete those stubborn two containers that were giving you the problem. You've removed it and now you are proceeding with matching to still not go through. Who can guess why? Okay, because your match is supposed to be 5-5. Five, five. But now the information on the BL is 3 and yours is 5. So you would have gotten that error, container number or container size does not match your manifest. But because the system has now noticed that the weight on your BOE is more than what is on the BL, it will actually tell you to confirm if it's a short landed. Please, I hope I'm making sense. The system itself will know that the BL you are matching with, the weight on it is lesser than what you have indicated on the BL. So to give you a pop-up that please confirm if this is short landed. So if that's the case, you have a button here called request to record short landed cargo. Now when you click on this button, what happens is that the shipping line has to go back to their system and indicate the container because remember that they've deleted those two containers completely from the system. There's no record of those containers. But because you'll be passing a certified entry for the two containers that will be coming, the system still needs to have reference to those containers. So they have the portion where they indicate all short landed containers. So if you check the screen, once you click on this button, you see this yellow bar, processing request. It says, when the shipping line completes the registration, the progress message will be changed to complete registration, and a short landed checkbox will be displayed on the screen. If you enter the screen again without manifest number and BL, the progress status is not displayed. So what it simply means is that at this stage, contact the shipping line for them to record the short landed cargoes on their menu. Once they are done, this will change to registration completed. So complete registration. Meaning at this point, you have access to indicate the short landed containers back on your BOE. 
Because remember, anytime you do manifest match in the system, automatically populates what has been submitted in the system. And what has been submitted in the system is what? Three. Because the amendment was done to delete the two. So if you indicate this, you check this box, what happens is that you have the chance to now indicate the two extra containers on the list. So at this point, you are manually going to add those two containers that shop landed. So, so far, we are dealing with the BOE with the three containers that have arrived. So let's not get lost. This is the BOE with the three containers you are working on. So if you indicate this, you now come to the container list. You click on add. Then now you add the two containers that shop landed. You save and you transfer. So what has happened is now your BOE has record of five containers on it. Please, I hope it's clear. So once you are done with this, you need to process the certified entry for the two containers that will be coming on a different vessel. Now, before you can begin with this process, the three containers have to be exited. Just as it was said, you need to be BOE exited, that is gated out before you'll be able to get access to do the certified entry. So the CPC used here is 40D03. So this CPC would ask you to quote the previous BOE, the one you made the payment on, the five containers. It would ask you if you use the CPC. Then you use post manifest because the revised BO, the one that is bringing the two, usually would have been gated in by the time that you are processing this declaration. So once you indicate that you attach all the documents pertaining to the previous one on this. And you create a new UCR for this because it's a new consignment you are processing. So you create a UCR, attach all the documents to it, and proceed. And note that this applies to Regime 40 only. This applies to Regime 40 only. So if you have a case of, let's say, warehouse, if it was a case of warehouse, you have to contact the system administrator and inform them they will process whatever needs to be processed for you. So I'll mention quickly on the topic of transshipment, direct transshipment at MPS. What direct transshipment means is that the cargo is not meant for Ghana, but the cargo is stopping in Ghana to discharge some containers. But that particular container won't step on the shores of Ghana. It will sit on the same vessel and go to its final destination. That's direct transshipment. Indirect means that the container will be taken to a particular IC, whether it's Jubilee, TBT, wherever. Then a different vessel will come and pick it up to its final destination. That's indirect. So if you're having a case of direct transshipment at MPS, you don't need to create a BOE. Don't create a BOE at all. For GPHA, you have to create a BOE. But for MPS, you don't create a BOE. The system automatically generates a BOE and the information is sent to customs and the shipping line, and you are good to go. Now we'll take a look at this issue, shipper's own container. Please, who is familiar with this particular issue? Who has had any error on shipper's own container before? No one here. Okay, you've had an error like that. Okay, so what shipper's own container simply means is that the container has been purchased by the importer from the shipper meaning the container won't return back to the port. It's going out for the importer's personal use, whatever that reason may be. So if you have a container like that, when you track your video, you have an SOC column standing for shipper's own container. You see why. If you see why, then it means that that container is shipper's own. Now for all shipper's own containers, you need to add this as a line item. Please, I hope. You are following. You add it as a line item because it's due to the importer is purchasing it for personal use, so it's considered due to So you add it as a line item, the way you add an item, put in the HS code, indicate the CPC and all that. You do the same thing for shippers own container. So let's assume we have only one shippers own container on this BO. The rest are not shippers own. It means on the BO you are going to indicate just Let's assume the first one is shippers only. Just indicate the first container as the first line item. Now, if you have more than one container, you don't have to indicate all of them individually. All you do is that, just like you have for a normal item, if you have, let's say, 20 bags of that item, 
you don't enter the first line item as one bar, the second item, you don't do that. What you need to do is just input the HS code, then indicate the quantity as the number of containers. So you have four shippers own containers. The quantity of that item is four. Then the description will have all the container numbers stated there as. So this, this is an example. You key in the HS code, you enter the container numbers in the description, then you just indicate the quantity. Now, there are certain points where you get to the shipping line, and the shipping line knows your job better than you and tells you that, please, you have not done manifest matching. Go back and go and do manifest matching. Who has had that experience before? You went to the shipping line, they told you that go and do manifest matching. No one. OK, you are all ICOS consultants, so you are, you are cool with the system, I understand. Now, if you, you go to the shipping line and you are told that go and do manifest matching, it's because on their system, they are not able to see your payment status reading as Y. Meaning that per the system, you've not paid duty. So go back to the bill, you go to the bill of tax, and make sure that the status of all the bills are reading receipt. If any of them is reading bill creation, then it means that that particular payment did not go through. And because of that, the shipping line cannot do the release for you. The other reason may be that you have a pending post entry. You did the matching and you raised the query, but you didn't go back to check the query and you proceeded to the shipping line. Because there's a query on the BOE, you are not able to do release, meaning you have to submit the response to the query, whether post entry or simple amendment. You need to submit it before you'll be able to go ahead with release. And for all post entries and simple amendment, you need to accept the assessment. And if there's payment, you make the payment before you proceed to do the shipping line. And now for first release, you don't need payment or manifest matching for first release. At the moment that the BL is submitted from the shipping line, at that point, you can, you can go for first release. Please help us clear. So that one, if they tell you that go and do manifest match, you need to indicate that we are doing first release. And first release is done on the master. You can't do first release on a house. So if you have the B or the master, and it has A, B, and C, it is the one without the alphabet that you'll be using for the first release. If you give them the A, and your A is not done with the processes, if you've not made payment on it, they'll tell you that go and do manifest match. Meanwhile, they are coming to do first release on the master. So let's take note of that. So we are almost through. I'll quickly talk about this issue. BOE exited with the wrong chassis. Then e tracking will come and continue with that process. So if you exit a BOE with a wrong chassis number, what happens is that you need to correct the information both on the BL and on the BOE. But here is a case, it has been exited. So what you do is that you contact the shipping line. They have a process they use called vehicle amend. So you inform the shipping line that I'm coming for vehicle amend. They will go into the system, submit the vehicle amend. You follow up at manifest seat for the approval. And once the approval is done, remember that you also indicated the wrong chassis on the BOE. So you need to create a post entry on the BOE. Then you go to the item level and make the corrections there. But if you just make the corrections and you try submitting, you get the error, chassis does not exist on manifest. Who can tell me why? We just talked about chassis does not exist on manifest. And now I'm saying that the shipping line has done the amendment. They have submitted it to customs. You've gone ahead for the approval. But now you are doing the post entry, you now correct the wrong chassis you put there, save the correct one, and you try submitting. You get the error, chassis does not exist on manifest. Mm -hmm. The reason is that just as you have the vehicle list showing on the BL for the system to know that this has been loaded, when you are doing the post entry, you need to also indicate that there has been a change. Because the system doesn't know. It's just an amendment that has been done. It wasn't loaded on the vehicle list. So what happens is that the system will give you the chance to select the chassis itself from the container. Please, I hope it's clear. The system itself will give you a chance to indicate that I want to get the correct chassis now before I submit this. So you see it. Let me show you. OK, so you see this button. 
get container stroke chassis from manifest. So this is the button you have to click first and select the information before you go ahead and correct it on the item. If you go ahead straight to the item, you get the error chassis that doesn't exist for manifest. But if you click on this button, you select the new information that has been done by the shipping line, you save and you proceed. So this is the little that I'm also adding. If you have any questions, we'll take it before you try to mount the stage. So please, if you have any questions concerning cargo issues, you can bring them now so we handle it. Any questions, please? Yeah, okay. You're okay? Please, are you okay? Okay, thank you very much. So we would have Okay, well, these are the things that we have done for now procurement of new tracking devices and accoutrement for warehousing operations uh, number two increase in stock of devices and route to ensure availability of logistics number three employment of extra hands to serve clients number four use of dedicated devices exclusively for vehicles and number five facilitate um, payment of new tracking related um, fees and other things. So now the issue of requesting for devices and you are not getting, I believe the information you have now, um, this thing is an issue of the past. If you have made a request for any device and you are not getting, before we are done, we will leave a number on the sheet so that you can call any of us. After you have made a request, we will leave a number so you can call any of us. And please go back. The issue of ropes. We have also taken care of this ones, but at this point, I will entreat, I will plead with you. When you get to the, the destination, please don't cut the ropes. <laughs> don't cut the ropes. This has been coming. So if we buy 10 million pieces of the ropes and you get to the destination and you cut it, we will come back to point one. Uh, we, we will talk about it, but let's, let's go on. Now we have more than enough staff. So when you have made a request, you are ready. When you call, there will be somebody to come and mount the device for you. All right. Number three. This is one of the challenges that we have, and I, I'm pleading with everybody here. In fact, Ghana Link and e-tracking for that matter is pleading with everybody. When they move the track from the starting point, most of the times you see that the drivers have parked along the motorway. For whatever reason they park there, I can't explain. But they park there mostly for one week, sometimes two weeks. By the time they move to wherever they are going, you see that the battery is drained out. We will wish that some of these practices will stop. Number four, when, when you make the request for the device and you are ready, please let us know that you are ready, you are moving, and then somebody will come. And then when you request for the device and you are not ready to move, kindly let us know, because we realize that you make the request for the device. And most of the times, it will sit at the warehousing seat for two days, three days, before you move. And one thing that we have to know is that warehousing activities are supposed to last for 72 hours. That's three days. And the transit one is for 10 days. So if you request for the device, which is supposed to be for just 72 hours, and you let it sit at MPS for more than 72 hours, we will dissolve the device. That is what we have to let you know. Um, people are complaining. They, they requested for the device. The device was issued to them. And so as long as the device can stay there until they are done, the device should sit there. When you make the payment for the device, it's supposed to be you have rented a device. You have not purchased the device. Please, you should bear in mind, you have rented a device. If you have just three days, you make sure that within the three days, you are ready to move. Other than that, after the three days, we will dissolve it. Number five. It's got to do with those people who are doing the transit, the kind of tarpaulin that they use to cover the thing. It's not good enough, so it is difficult for us to put the ropes inside to cover the thing. So if you can handle this, work on this from now. And then number six, the kind of tracks that we use for the transit activities. Um, this one, I think we are still talking to customs. You know the kind of tracks that is okay for this kind of transactions. Now what we have resolved is that if you take the device and it is damaged by the time you bring it, you are going to be charged for it. It is there, 1,000 Ghana cities for the device, if you bring it, but it depends on the circumstance under which the device is returned. Sometimes it's an accident. If we check the device and it's beyond any reasonable, uh, that 
it is not your doing, nobody can charge you because accidents are bound to happen. So with that one, we cannot fault you. But if it comes and we, 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 we notice that you, you had something to do with it, like the rope cut and other things. We, we, and sometimes when the device returns, we see that you've op opened the back. I don't know for what purpose they do that. And the overdue transactions, and this one also goes to the people who are doing the, um, the transit. When you take the device, it's supposed to be for 10 days. After the 10th day, we are going to start charging. Every day, we will charge until you bring the device. If they don't delay, or the yes. yes. the charge is already on some charge because the day has passed. Okay, so that one is going to customs, but this one is e tracking. <laughs> he said, um, e tracking is a separate entity. As my, my manager said earlier, the charges that go to customs is different from those that come to e tracking. So, in as much as customs is charging you for delaying them, we also charge for keeping our devices because the devices are recalibrated for other use. So if you take it for 20 days, it means that you are telling somebody else to wait until you are comfortable to return the device. And it doesn't happen like that. Imagine you are doing 20 containers and we give you 20. You assume that we have more devices. Another person comes for 30. He also says that we have more devices and he also keeps the 30. In the end, how many devices are we going to have? At what time are we supposed to give you the device so that it will be within the time frame? The managers are talking about those things. So that if you are able to satisfy those conditions, when you take the device and you don't return, we can also be strict on you. Yeah. I hope it makes sense. Yeah. All right. Please, if there is any issue that you want us to tackle, let's, so that you can have time to do other things. No issue. Are we all okay? Yeah. All right. So most of you, I believe, for now, will bear with testify that we, are, we have improved so much. Initially, people were talking about real-time locations and other things, but now all those things are things of the past. Call any of us, and then we talk about how we can improve. We want to give you a top-notch condition, but for now, I believe what we are giving is the best. But if you know of any situation that you think we can add up to what we are giving so that what we are doing can be best, let us know. We are available for you. So without much ado, if you don't have any question, I think we can call it a day.
I think, with my own opinion, I think that that customs response section, if it's uh, something to maybe explain, and when you type in on the same post entry level on that particular viewing, maybe the officer should be able to have access to your message and maybe work on your entry, which it shouldn't demand for a second post entry, third post entry, or simple amendment. Because for me, when you do post entries, it's a, it's a, a little against your one. I don't know if it applies the same here. This is like gate in. Gate in, officers must do gate in without you necessarily going there. But now they are asking you to come Hi. there before they do gate in. Welcome. It is not a system problem. You see, so we have to understand what the system issues are and what the administrative issues are. The administrative issues is what I said that your leaders must take it up. And it's important that they, because there are four or five major associations, if they put their heads together, put all these issues together, and then meet the sector, I think they can make some headway. So let's impress upon our leaders to also help us to make the process a bit smooth for us. Right. Now, the last thing is that before, quite recently, when you go and renew your licenses with customs, they will go into the system and take all hanging BOEs. They will ask you to go and perfect them before they, re they renew your licenses for you. They start doing that, I think, from last two, three months. So currently, the report issues that I spoke about, when you go back, just try and go into the system. At least, maybe 2020, when we started, there was chaos, so fine, but that is okay. But 2021 coming, just make sure that if you have any hanging BOEs in the system, you start perfecting them before your renewal is due. Because otherwise, they will ask you to go and perfect them before they will renew your licenses for you. Okay? Right. So thank you very much. Thank then, you. Right. Yes, we have... Your president is in our midst. And he wants to just greet you. And know that he's also involved in organizing this training so that everybody here will be able to do the right thing yes, sir. and then they will not have issue. I always say that having issue with that is so difficult to. Don't fall into our trouble. Make sure that you don't fall into GRE, especially government institutions, your trouble. You will work and work out, work out, work out, and you're, you will be tired. So do the right thing and avoid trouble with customs. So Mr. President, we want to hear from you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. That's what I want to say now. And it's been a pleasure having you around. And I'm, I'm impressed by the tenor. I mean, people are normally people with champions. But this is called to the success of uh, what we do. So really, it's been an honor having you around all day. And uh, we're going to have another session. I think they said they are here. Uh -huh. Let me check on them. There's anything that you don't anything that's worrying you, please. You know our various platforms. I mean, articulate in there and then we'll there for people. Once again, thank you. The interaction that has come up. I believe that uh, this is not going to be the first time because we want the continuous improvement. And we are going to engage you further in the future. We want the best for Ghana and we want the best for you, for the best for ourselves. My letter advice is that we are not working just to make things difficult for you, but you also have to do things that will make the work easier so that you will not be going through the challenges that you are going through. Because uh, some of these challenges are minor, minor issues that you, you should be able to you know, resolve them before you get to the challenges. Uh, going for a place that's all work together. When you have challenges, we have money. We can direct your issues to them. And we are always welcome. We will also be ready to ensure that we resolve it. Even if there is a net for us to engage customs to resolve such problems, we are working along with them. And we are going to ensure that we meet them. And also, whatever feedback they give us, we will let you know so that we get the problem solved. So once, once more, I thank you for, your, for being here together. And we hope to come back again in the future to continue to enhance it to the best interest of all of us. Thank you.